in uh, Poland, Gulliver, a very somber ceremony uh, where basically it was all about the survivors of Auschwitz who got to tell their side of the story. Yes, uh, well, so we had four uh, survivors who spoke. Stanisław uh, Zalewski and uh, Batsheva uh, Dagan both uh, gave uh, accounts of courage and uh, the strength uh, that, that was found when they were in Auschwitz, particularly Batsheva uh, Dagan said that uh, in talking to younger generations about the horrors that happened here, uh, we can also talk about positive human qualities, the friendships uh, that were found here, and also she talked about her experiences learning. She learned French, for example, while she was uh, interned here. Stories uh, from them of human strength. Um, perhaps uh, the speech, though, that uh, will have made the most uncomfortable listening for some of the delegates here, I think. And the one which had perhaps the most clear political content was that of Marianne Tursky. He spoke, like everyone here, about the need to not let this happen again, but he kind of went into more detail. He said, remember, <coughs> Auschwitz did not fall from the sky, and he talked about the gradual way that authoritarianism uh, um, emerged uh, in Hitler's Germany. And he made, I think, quite clear allusions to the creeping authoritarianism and also identity politics that is on the rise in various countries around the world um, at the moment, including, of course, the United States. Donald Trump, the United States president, is not here, nor is uh, Mike Pence, the vice president. People who are in the audience, though, include the Polish president, Andrzej Duda, and the Hungarian prime minister, Viktor Orban, both people who have been accused of backsliding on democracy as European Union member states. And I think Marianne Turski's message was that people should be vigilant. He said the uh, uh, 11th commandment is be not indifferent, and I think there. He was making an allusion to the need to preserve uh, democracy and not allow authoritarianism and identity politics to gain too much ground here in Europe today. Now, uh, Gulliver, earlier we had uh, Poland's President Andrzej Duda, who did address the gathering. While he, for the most part, kept politics out of his, uh, his statement, he did talk about the importance in guarding the truth. He talked about the importance in guarding the truth and, um, well, this is a country whose government has taken over the state broadcaster, which is constitutionally obliged to be impartial. And uh, the state broadcaster, it's very clearly uh, demonstrable, um, is um, having extremely biased coverage of what's going on in Polish politics. It's immensely criticized by uh, all of the Polish uh, opposition. That's also something that Marian Turski, uh, the Holocaust survivor, said, is that governments are not supposed to represent only the majority that elect them, but also to uh, have time for uh, the minorities that there are in the country. That's not something that the Polish government is doing. I'm not sure if now is the time to really enter into uh, accusations of Andrzej Duda, but I think there are a lot of people in Poland who will think that he was being extremely hypocritical in talking about truth, given the way that the Polish government has treated the Polish state media in the five years that it's been in power. Gulliver, thank you very much for that Gulliver Craig reporting there. I want to bring in Professor Ajay Winter. Uh, Professor Winter, you know, when we had a lot of the, 